All right, Art 2 students, I am so excited about the lesson that I'm about to share with y'all. It was a really tough decision to narrow down um, exactly what I had to cover before we get into AP Art, um, but we're just going to go ahead and cover it. And so we have learned about style, we have learned about the figure, we have learned about um, character design, and interactive art, just to kind of give you a broad basis of art to work with. Then we talked about using art as a weapon, and we also um, talked about composition and design. All of those topics and lessons um, were really, really just the core of what um, I'm trying to communicate with you in preparation for AP art. So this last week, what we're going to do before we get to our final is a mini concentration. This is going to be the biggest, most important art project that you've done all semester. Um, so we call it a concentration a lot of times because it's easier to say, but the official term in AP art right now is called sustained investigation. So I'll interchange those terms throughout this presentation. All right, so let's get into what is a concentration. It is a series of artworks centered around one central idea. Um, the idea or theme should be obvious just by looking at the art and you will be required to make 15 pieces next year around one theme. The artwork is scored on a numerical system. Um, it is a one to six scale. Um, scores are averaged. They look at everyone's art that's been submitted in that year. And the highest score that you can get is a five. A one or two is usually considered failing. And most colleges give credit for a three, four, or five. All right, so this week we're going to start by learning about the sustained investigation and what College Board is looking for. The second thing we're going to do is practice scoring someone else's portfolio. The third thing we're going to do is plan. So you're going to plan what you could make for your own mini concentration. And then the last thing you're going to do is actually create those art pieces. All right, so. Principles of design, what College Board, and College Board is the company that owns AP, um, and AP stands for Advanced Placement. So you've got all different subjects that AP offers. The art and design portfolios are graded just like that. You turn in a portfolio, you do not take a paper and pencil test, you don't write an essay in a time setting. No, you make artwork, you take pictures of it, you mail in your artwork, you submit digital pictures and writing to go along with what you made. So what they're looking for when they look at your art are unity and variety, balance, emphasis, contrast, rhythm, repetition, proportion or scale, and then a figure ground relationship. Now, those vary just a little bit according to what type of portfolio you're doing, and I'll talk about the three types in just a second. But the reason we talk so much about the principles of design, the reason that we focus so much on composition is because that is exactly what AP Board is requiring when they score your artwork. So the first type of portfolio that I want to talk about is the drawing portfolio. And I'm just going to read this slide to you because it has a lot of information on it. Um, but be thinking about which of the three portfolios best suits you and your skills and your interests. Okay, so in the drawing portfolio, they want to see you exploring issues of line quality, light and shade, rendering of form, composition surface manipulation, um, the illusion of depth, and mark making. Those are all drawing issues that can be addressed in the portfolio. Techniques can include things like drawing, painting, printmaking, mixed media, and more. Skills, they do not care if you do abstract or observational artwork. They just wanna see that you have drawing skill. The main thing that they're looking for is mark making. So using a range of marks to make drawings, using confident line strokes, the arrangement of the marks, um, you can use any kind of material to make those marks, but the main thing that they're looking for in drawing is mark making. 
And for content, there is no preferred or unacceptable um, content or style. So you should be able to do any type of art that you want. Um, you can make it about anything that you want. College Board <clears throat> is different from high school in that um, you have a little bit more freedom in what imagery you use or how you use it or what topics you talk about. So things that might be considered a little bit taboo in the high school setting might be something I can't hang up in a high school art show um, can still be in a AP portfolio. Just make sure that you're not um, perceived as just being edgy. Make sure it's meaningful. Make sure it's um, it ties into your theme. <clears throat> Another thing about the drawing portfolio is that as of this school year, um, so for the students that are submitting portfolios right now, um, this is the first year that digital art has been moved over and included in the drawing portfolio um, because most people are doing digital painting or their drawing. And so um, they wanted to see that kind of work in the drawing portfolio because they feel like it is more about mark making. Um, but this does not include photo editing, photo manipulation. That would be in 2D design. So let's talk about that portfolio. The 2D design portfolio is looking at your decision making. So it's more important. So in the last portfolio, they were looking at mark making. In this portfolio, they are looking at decision making. So a lot of people confuse drawing and 2D design. They're both flat pieces of artwork, but design is gonna be things like graphic design, fashion design, product design, all those things that um, have artists worrying more about using elements of art and principles of design um, instead of medium and materials. Um, they want to see purposeful decision making about how you use the elements of art and principles of art. They want to see you integrate it with communication. So um, you still would have content. Um, you would still be communicating a message, um, but they want to see that every single choice that you make um, communicates that message very clearly. That's exactly what graphic designers do. Um, they want to see the principles of design and the ones that they focus on are unity, variety, balance, emphasis, contrast, rhythm, repetition, proportion and scale, and figure ground relationships. The techniques that you can use for this portfolio are graphic design, that would be on Photoshop or different programs like that. Photography, collage, fabric design, weaving, fashion design, maybe printmaking, depending on whether or not it is more focused on mark making or on design and composition. The skill that they wanna see is effective use of line, shape, color, value, texture, and space in your design. It can be representational or abstract. There is no preferred content as long as there is communication, just like there is no preferred style as long as there is good communication. AP does not allow anyone to submit videos, so you cannot do any kind of video design for your portfolio unless you are planning to show still images of that design. Um, most likely it is better to stay away <laughs> from that. So only still images and some writing is included in the AP art portfolios. All right, so the last portfolio is 3D design. That is a design portfolio that focuses on sculpture and 3D art. The purpose is to address design issues through sculpture that integrates depth, volume, space, and surface. The principles of design for this portfolio are slightly different. So they want to see you using unity and variety together, balance, emphasis, contrast, rhythm, repetition, proportion and scale together, and occupied and unoccupied space. So that's that negative and positive that we talk about in sculpture. The elements of art that they want to see are also slightly different. They include mass and volume because those are elemental to 3D art, color and light, form, plane, line, and texture. So several of those terms are different, light, 
is a different one, plain is a different one. So you need to explore those elements and how they relate to sculpture if that is the portfolio that you want to do. The techniques that they want to see is a mastery of 3D design and skill. So pick a medium that you're skilled at and also design things that look pleasing to the eye. You may use any three-dimensional approach, which includes things like metalwork, ceramics, glasswork, assemblage, 3D um, fabric, and fiber arts. There are many, many more things that you could explore. Um, you can use any medium that you wish as long as it is three-dimensional. There is no prefer preferred or unacceptable style or content. Your work may be figurative or non-figurative, sculpture. Um, it may be architecture models. It may be installations. So think about all those interactive art um, things that we talked about a few weeks ago, and that would be included in this 3D design portfolio. Um, the total number of artworks would be slightly modified for a 3D design portfolio. You would be required to do eight to 10 sculptures. You would still submit 15 images, but your sculptures just need to be grand in scale. So usually drawings and paintings are this big, they need to do 15. You're doing sculptures, they're large, they take up space. So usually you submit about 10 different sculptures. All right, so just to review, each portfolio is going to explore a sustained investigation. You're gonna pick a topic and you're going to make artwork that explores that idea. So your concentration and your sustained investigation are the same thing. For the portfolio, what you're submitting is 15 images on one topic or theme. So the medium does not have to be the same across all the pieces. Choose mediums that you are good at using, but you can change mediums from one piece to the next, or you can use the same medium throughout the entire portfolio. The size of your pieces can vary. Bigger is not always better. You're on a time crunch, so instead of making 10 very large pieces that you struggle to get done, um, it might be better to do multiple smaller pieces or do a variation, do five small, five medium, and five large pieces. Um, the size requirements is they cannot be smaller than a piece of paper, and if they are, we have to mat them on a sheet of paper that is normal eight and a half by 11 size. Um, and then your portfolio pieces cannot be bigger than a piece of poster board because they give us envelopes to mail your pieces in and those envelopes are the size of a piece of poster board. Visually, everything should tie together, whether that's through color, whether that's through subject, whether that's through style. Um, your voice and style should be obvious in all these pieces. So that's why we really talked about style a few weeks ago. We looked at other artists' work. Um, that is very important in this portfolio. Think Elements, principles, focal point, and composition. No matter what type of portfolio you are doing, those ideas are going to be important and they need to be obvious in every single piece that you create. The idea matters the most and the idea should be very obvious. Your artistic growth matters and should be evident in the pieces. So this portfolio is supposed to reflect on what your art making looks like over the course of a year. So if you throw together 15 pieces in a month, that is not going to be good for the portfolio. Hang on, just a second. I mean, distance learning. <laughs> All right, so um, make sure that you make the pieces over the course of an entire school year. Um, that's my dog. She's very upset that we have visitors. <laughs> um, and also, um, for this piece, obviously, you're going to make them at the same time, hopefully over the course of a week and a half or so, so there won't be um, as much growth as there will be in your actual portfolio. All right, so now we're gonna get into some examples. So I'm gonna show you some other people's art and their portfolios so that you can see and get an idea of what I'm talking about. All right, so the first portfolio, I actually have 15 pieces.
And after we get through all these pieces, I'm going to read you the commentary. So a portion of your AP portfolio is writing a commentary that explains your thought process. This is also graded when your portfolio is scored. So they ask the question, what is the central idea of your concentration? And you get to explain yourself. So this person said, I have always been interested in the sensual feminine figure of the pair. In my portfolio, I explored design issues using the form of the pair. I began depicting the pair like in figure two. I then I studied the artists Andy Warhol, Jean Art, and Marcel Duchamp. Their brightly colored pop art, biomorph biomorphic shapes, and elevation of the object inspired me. I moved on to explore color, picture plane, placement, focal point, design, and composition. All right, so that's an example of a portfolio, all the different ways that you could explore a theme, and then there is their explanation for what they did. For the next portfolios, I'm only gonna show you about three pieces from each portfolio, but just to give you an idea of the range of different topics and ideas and art that you can do. So here's another one. This is actually by a Hernando High School student. And then what is the central idea of their concentration? It is string. String is a wonderful, is a wonder that is often overlooked. It brings things together in an unassuming way all around it. We are living in an overcomplicated time with isolation, social distancing, and loneliness. Through these pastel-tinted childlike illustrations, I highlight simple pleasures. Each piece represents simple joy and things coming together. All right, this is another portfolio. This is a 3D ceramics portfolio. And then what is the central idea of your concentration? I grew up in another country from the one I live in now. I have lived here for four years and it has been a huge change. Some things are better about my life here, but there are things about my culture that I am missing. In my investigation, I want to explore my culture and celebrate it through traditional, through the traditional medium of clay. I used forms and colors prevalent in the folk art from the region I used to live. These forms should be beautiful. The colors should be bold and the imagery familiar to Mexicans. Viva Mexico. All right, this next one shows different fruits and vegetables. What is the central idea of your concentration? Food is one of humans most basic needs. We cannot survive without it. And through my artwork, I want to bring attention to individual pieces of food. By creating a painting for the food, I feel like I am placing them on a pedestal, celebrating food in a time and country where we often forget the basic importance of it because of the abundance of it. All right, this next concentration shows portraits of chickens. What is the central idea of your concentration? Portraits have always been an important genre in the art world. In a time before cameras, they helped capture and memorialize people. They represent important figures and create a more sophisticated look at a person. I believe that animals can have the personality and importance equal to people. They too deserve the memorial memorialization and sophistication that is found in portraiture. All right, this next one. What is the central idea of your concentration? Trees offer a reminder of growth, change, and strength. They are a natural calendar showing the changing seasons and passing years. In my concentration, I focus on the growth and change of trees through the formation and extension of branches and changing colors in the leaves. Now the portfolio we just looked at, that one could have gone into the 2D design category even though it was a drawing portfolio. So, so far I've shown you drawing, I've shown you 3D. Let's look at some 2D portfolios. This is one. What is the central idea of your concentration? The invention of photography gave humans an immeasurable gift. Now, when I first heard that this was a 2D portfolio, I was confused, but when I found out it was photography, it made much more sense to me. 
we can easily capture moments, peoples, and places. We can look back and remember experiences through the photographs we took. I want to use a mixed media technique to further enhance and bring focus to the beautiful images and memories that our photographs reflect. Here is another one. This one is drawing as well. What is the central idea of this concentration? Women have come a long way in history. We have risen above, above oppression and are living in a time when we are closer than ever to equality with our male counterpart. The puffy dresses of the past are behind us. Through my concentration, I wanted to refocus on the past as a reminder of where we were, how far we have come and where we still need to go. All right, so next we're going to look at a portfolio and score it, and I forgot to delete that subtitle. All right, so the key scoring descriptors, um, I looked at the College Board rubric, College Board's the company that owns AP Art, and this is what they're looking for according to the rubric. Now this might be altered a little bit before next year, but right now, they're looking at general use of design elements to investigate the principles of design, Decision making and intentional, or sorry, an intention in the compositional use of the elements and principles of design. Originality, imagination and invention. Experimentation and risk taking. Confident, evocative work and engagement of the viewer. Technical competence and skill with materials and media. They also now are looking at your technique and your processes. That's another word that they, words, I guess, that they're using. And then appropriation. So what artists are you inspired by? But then your voice or your style needs to be very obvious as well. And then overall accomplishment and quality. All right, so here is a portfolio. And if you look on the left, there is someone actually working on this piece. They want to see process images in the AP portfolio now. So that is something that we will also be taking and keeping track of next year. And then here are the pieces in this concentration. All right, so what is the central idea of this concentration? Our society is completely preoccupied with success. Everyone wants to be the best and touts their claims through social media and status symbols. The trophy is a symbol that I use to explore this win at all costs mentality. Through the ideas in my art, I hope to demonstrate that we can break through societal norms and focus on happiness and kindness. All right, so the score that this portfolio got was a three. While you were looking at it, what score would you have given it? And then why do you think it actually got the score of three according to those guidelines? All right, so now we're gonna get into making our own um, concentration in preparation for our AP portfolio. First thing you need to do is make sure that you have the planning document from Google Classroom. This is a crucial step in your AP art next year. And so this is also an important part of your grade for this assignment. Print or download the planning sheet. If you don't have a printer, don't worry about it. Just answer it on a plain sheet of paper. If you have your sketchbook, please answer it in your sketchbook so that you can keep up with this and have it for next year. If you do it on a sheet of paper that you printed out, put the paper into your sketchbook when you're finished and then keep your sketchbook until next year. Draw thumbnails in your sketchbook. You will be asked to do four pieces for this project, but I want you to draw five thumbnails. You always need to have one more idea. That will be true in AP art as well. If you don't have your sketchbook at home with you, please just do it on a plain sheet of paper, but keep the paper for next year. We'll be looking back at this work at the beginning of the year to kind of plan out our concentration. If you don't take AP till the spring, then you need to keep up with it until January because that's when we'll be looking at it to plan your concentration together. Now, this project should not stop your art making. This should kind of spark an idea for you, and you should begin exploring that idea over the summer. You will get some summer assignments before AP art. 
All right, so the final thing I want you do, to do is create. So your assignment, and this is it, this is like the important part right here. Um, you're going to create a mini concentration or sustain investigation. Those terms mean the same thing. I want you to choose the portfolio type that is most appropriate to your interests for AP art. And then I want you to create, whoops, it says three there, four pieces of art centered around one theme. Keep visual unity in mind as you make choices about color and medium. The medium, however, is totally up to you. Use whatever medium you want to. You can even use more than one medium. You can change mediums. You can do two pieces in one medium and two pieces in another medium. It is totally your choice. Just make sure everything is visually unified at the end. Then your size needs to be between four by six, so no smaller than four by six, and no larger than 12 by 18. So you can do all four pieces on a 12 by 18 sheet, or you can do four separate 12 by 18 pieces. That's very large though. Um, so, you know, choose the size that feels right to you. Um, you can also vary the size so you can, you know, make one or two, one size, and then change it up. Totally up to you. Once you complete your works of art, you will write a paragraph long statement stating what your concentration is about, just like all the statements we looked at in this video. And you will be directed to do that on the form that you printed out. All right, so I wanna say you got this. Go ahead and get started when you're planning. Once you submit that sheet and I say, great, go ahead and start making your pieces. If you're confused, if you want feedback before you start creating, then once you submit that document, just ask me a question and wait for the comments back on Google Classroom. Most importantly, when you make your work, remember to take risks put your voice in the work, and create work that has your own energy. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please email me at karencross at dcsms.org, and have an awesome week.